the department versus Jennifer Davila and Robert Alcala. Let me have the parties identify. Gary Mitchell with the Lubbock County District Attorney's Office appearing on behalf of the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. The department appears today through Abigail Cordonaire, caseworker, and Sarah Bustamante. The department also appears today I am through St. Francis Ministry Supervisor Jay Lee uh, Reynolds. We're present and ready to proceed. Um, Sarah Hudman, attorney for parents Jennifer Davila and Robert Alcala, who are present in the CPS courtroom. Jana Clift Williams, I'm the attorney ad litem for Erica, the child. Okay, very good. Tell me how these parents are doing in services. This will be their fourth compliance hearing. They've been doing well. Are we still doing well? Yes, they continue to do well. Um, they've completed their parenting counseling. They just need one more. They're working on their re, uh, relapse. Um, and uh, from there, they're going to, uh, the relapse plan, and then from there, they're going to be, um, they'll have completed that. And that's for both Jennifer and Robert. They continue to um, test negative on their drug tests. Uh, Jennifer continue and, and Robert are both um, attending the AANA um, sessions and they're just both doing really well. I've seen a lot of growth in them. Um, their excitement of, of um, just being um, sober and being available. Um, Jennifer, yesterday we were just talking and she was expressing the um, changes she's seen in her life. Like she's even forming um, her relationships again with her older children. They're calling upon her um, where before they wouldn't have called her um, because she was, she was never available, but she's forming those relationships again um, with the grandchildren there too. So there, there's just been a lot of growth in that family and I'm just very proud of them. Okay. That's awesome. Um, tell me from the family center treatment side of things, how are we doing? Um, Your Honor, uh, she is doing a fabulous job. She uh, has shown significant growth. Oh, I'm sorry. Is this the Davila case? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Wrong case. Do we have a... Yes, ma'am. Right here. Okay. Um, they've been doing really well. They've been bringing their own activities to the sessions, um, and they've been actually working on um, things that will help within their family. Like she said that they've been reconnecting with the older children as well. Um, they've been doing things to actually improve their communication with them and with one another still. They've made great improvements. Okay, very good. Ms. Hudman, anything to add on behalf of your clients? No, Your Honor, I'm super proud of them. They stay in contact with me. They send me their parenting certificates and um, they're, they're doing great. And I'm, I'm extremely proud of them. Ms. Cliff Williams, any concerns about Erica? None whatsoever, Your Honor. She is growing, um, uh, moving, and uh, gaining a lot of weight. She's doing very, very well. The parents are doing very well. Um, I, too, am very proud of them for their, their success thus far. Okay, Ms. Davila, Mr. Alcala, y'all have anything to add? No, ma'am. Just thank you for y'all support and help. Is that Erica? Mm-hmm. She is a cutie. Tell me kind of what you're working on as far as your relapse prevention. What Do you know anything that's going to be part of that plan? First of all, we've learned to stay away from negative people, people that use drugs, whether it's family, friends, brothers, sisters. Um, our plan in place is I'm trying to get me an apartment right now. So if anything for the worst was to happen, we I would have somewhere to take baby for a safe place um, to where you know, we could have somewhere to go if something was to happen, whether if he was to relapse, I pray to God it doesn't happen, or I was to relapse, you know, we would have something to fall back on. But also we have our supporters and our any any class group that have been helping us, you know, through certain, you know, things like my father passing away, you know, getting into depression where I used to turn to drugs. Now I know I have people that I can talk to and to keep me from doing that. I mean, and basically that's about it. I mean, me and Robert, we go to our classes and, you know, I've had an event with my son too, not too long ago, my older son that burned himself. And I was able to learn how to cope with that instead of turn around and go use drugs. I mean, the relationship with him is great because I, I see with my own eyes that if I wouldn't have been sober, I wouldn't have been able to be there as a mother like I should have. And I mean... We're trying our best and doing what we should do, following and complying the way we're supposed to do. Okay, well, I'm very proud of you all. That sounds very good. Um, is there anything that you folks need? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. 
All right, very good. I'm going to set another review hearing for y'all January the 9th at 3. Thank you. It should be pretty close to a dismissal if they keep, things keep going the way they are. So we'll see where we are on January the 9th at 3. All righty. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, you. Jennifer White. Thank you, Jennifer. Let me have the parties identify. Gary Mitchell with the Lubbock County District Attorney's Office bearing on behalf of the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. The department appears today by and through caseworker Abigail Cordonier and Supervisor Sarah Bustamante present and ready to proceed. Matt Morrow, attorney for the Respondent Parents. I am present and ready as are uh, my uh, clients that are in the courtroom. Jana Clift Williams, I'm the attorney at Lightum for Sonia, who is uh, present with Jennifer, but sleeping. Okay, so we have also this case, I didn't say it in the beginning, but we also have services uh, for the father, in this case, Mr. Vargas, who is incarcerated, but in the courtroom. Okay, tell me how the parents are doing in services this month. Okay, um, Jennifer is doing well. Um, she's completed her parenting. Uh, she's done everything that we've needed her to do. She just continues to work with the family, uh, family center treatment with, with St. Francis. Um, as she is at WPS. Um, that has been good for her. She's gone ahead and started a substance abuse group there. So even though she's completed everything with us, she's doing substance abuse there. Um, she is also um, doing counseling there. So she she's participating in those groups. She is working. It is a temporary job that, you know, if anything, that's the only thing I've asked Jennifer, you know, try to find a, a more um, a, a stable job. Because right now she's just she's ringing the bell uh, for Salvation with Salvation Army. But um, but she does have a job. She's she's doing what she needs to do. Um, she's doing well. She has a stable place. We've talked about, you know, what the future looks like for her. She's planning to stay there until um hopefully she's able to find housing um, that WPS is going to be able to help her with. And so she, she's doing well. Okay. What about dad? Dad, he's doing good. He continues to be, uh, he's incarcerated. His, he's not going to have his um, next court hearing until February, but he has changed a lot. Even um, just, I was telling him, you know, just yesterday when we have our conversations, um, his health, number one, is also better. Uh, one, one thing, he was always in pain when we first got the case um, because of his liver. Um, but now that he's not drinking, he's his health has improved. He continues to um, work there. Um, and he's he works doing laundry. Um, he's doing his classes, uh, 33 series there. He's participating in um, um, some biblical um, studies there as well that he's doing. And so he has he has goals to whenever he gets out um, changes that he's wanting to make in his life. And um, he's able to, to verbalize that and, and wanting to do better for his daughter. OK, the family centered treatment folks, tell me from your perspective how parents are doing. Um, Jennifer's been doing really well. Um, she uh, is pretty much completed everything we've asked of her. She did her family giving project this past weekend. Uh, I've show, I've seen tremendous growth in uh, working with her. She's also remained very optimistic. And uh, anytime she gets knocked down, she's discovered ways to uh, pull herself back up. Um, but we are at the final stages of our uh, treatment. Okay, Ms. Whitehead, do you agree? Yes, ma'am, I agree. All right, Mr. Vargas, do you agree? Yes, ma'am. All right, Mr. Mitchell, this is month six. Uh, we either need to dismiss today or sign an extension on this case. Tell me from the department's perspective, are we ready to dismiss? I know in, in my recent reading of the emails, I think, uh, and I hope I'm not speaking out of turn, I think um, the, the, uh, the last part there that you just heard about is what's holding this up from getting dismissed. And um, I, I think I would give them one opportunity to address any deficiencies they see at this time before we ask for a, a, a dismissal. It may be that the parents, if we dismiss this case, the parents would continue to go through and complete some additional services voluntarily. Ms. Williams, Cliff Williams any concerns regarding Sonia? No, Your Honor, I have no concerns uh, with Sonia. Um, she's uh, teething, but she's a happy, healthy baby. All of her needs are being met. Uh, Jennifer is doing a great job. Mr. Morrow? I've known Jennifer for a long 
time and she's doing amazing and I'm very proud of her. And I wanted to make sure that, that was said at how, because I've known her for a long time and I've seen a real drastic change in her and what she's doing going forward. And I think that she's made some really excellent progress. Okay. Mr. Marlon, do you think we need another month? I would leave it up to Jennifer. Um, I, I didn't really know that was kind of the limit today. I think we'd be fine dismissing, but if we need one more month so that she could keep some of the resources the, the department is helping her with, I would be okay with that as well. So I, I'll let Jennifer kind of add on that. Jennifer, do you want to stay with the department, uh, keep doing services for one more month? I think that we'll be okay dismissing. Okay. All right. Then I'm going to ask for a dismissal today, Judge. Okay. Mr. Mitchell? Your Honor, as I said, I, I think with what we've heard from the attorneys in this case and the, and the progress that we've made, we would not uh, raise a big objection to a dismissal today. Okay, I will dismiss the case. Good luck to you folks. Thank Proud you. Of you. You did what you need to do. Uh, I wish you the best of luck going forward with that cute little one. Thank you. Congratulations, you Jennifer. Good job. Don't be a stranger. I won't, Matt. Thank you. All right. Thank you all, and thank you, Mr. Vargas. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Your Honor. Monday for a drug test. I guess you don't have to. All right. We'll be adjourned. Jerry Mitchell with the Lubbock County District Attorney's Office appearing on behalf of the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. The department appears today by and through St. Francis Ministries caseworker Chelsea Bosquez and uh, Supervisor Pam Council, I believe. Leanne Fouts, attorney for Ariel Briones. She's present with me. Matt Marlon, okay. attorney, yeah, attorney and guardian line for the children present right here, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, tell me how Ms. Briones is doing in services, Ms. Council. Um, she's doing really well. Um, she um, has been negative on all of her drug tests um, during the FBSS case, including a hair strand that she took last week. Um, she has about um, five or six more parenting classes that she needs to get completed. Um, Ariel and her kids are, or her two older kids are in counseling with um, Choices Counseling, and they continue to do that. Um, and as far as everything else, um, that's the only thing that she needs to get done at this point, just finishing up her parenting classes and um, continuing counseling. Okay. Uh, are you telling me that mom is fully engaged in services and there's no services that she needs to be participating in that she's not? Yes. Okay. Are we uh, concerned regarding mom addressing the issues in, in the services or is she making the changes that she needs to make? Um, I believe she's making the changes that she needs to. Okay. Very good. Ms. Fouts, anything to add? I think Ms. Fouts might be frozen. Ms. Briones, do you have anything to add? Um, just the fact that the parenting classes have really benefited me as a parent, as a mom. Um, I didn't realize how much um, my mentality physically and all, all the above just have an impact on my kids. Um, I'm learning to kind of make sure I'm aware of my self-care mentally and I don't get so overwhelmed with, with all four kiddos, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm able to, you know, do my daily routine for them and keep it structured, a stable environment for them instead of just getting so overwhelmed and all over the place. And um, just the impact it has on their little brains and it's the parenting classes have been helping me a lot, Judge, and I'm thankful for the services. Okay, very good. What do you think about the therapy with your older two? Is that... Yeah, they, the past three sessions that they've gone to, they've really opened up to her. And it's kind of surprising because at school, they weren't opening to the counselor there and um, their teachers. But I guess since it's one on one, they're getting more comfortable with the counselor. So I've noticed um, I've noticed a big change in both of them. OK, that's beautiful. Uh, Tomorrow, any concerns with any of the children? Not really. Just, just want to kind of add on to what Ms. Brion said with the older twins, with uh, 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 Braylon and Breland, uh, that there, you know, there were some issues when they came back home from some trauma they experienced, and I think that this new uh, therapy is going really well from all the reports I received. I would just like to see that continue. Uh, Legend and Grace apparently are just happy, go lucky, wonderful two-year-olds, and so uh, that's really all I wanted to add. 
No, I just, I wanted to, Ariel and I visited yesterday and I wanted to check with her about, she was meeting with Voices of Hope again yesterday to check on her ability to get some Uber cards to help her get around because there were some issues with the bus passes that the department provided to her aren't helping uh, because of the route and because of where Ariel was, that wasn't, those bus passes aren't going to work. And so I just wanted to check with Ariel about whether she was able to get that straightened out. Yes, ma'am. Um, my advocate from Voice to Hope came over and she's going to bring me an Uber card Thursday uh, because I have to meet with my Section 8 at 8 a.m. So she was going to um, bring the Uber card then so I could start getting the kids back in daycare and back to work. Perfect. Okay. Okay, baby. Anything else for Ms. Briones? Hey, ma'am. All right, I'm going to set another review here in January the 9th at 3. All right, good luck, Ms. Briones. We'll see you next time. Uh -huh. Gary Mitchell with the Lubbock County District Attorney's Office appearing on behalf of the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. The department appears today by and through caseworker Samantha Chola and Supervisor Sarah Bustamani, present and ready to proceed. Katie Mason, attorney and guardian line for the children, present and ready. Okay, and Ms. Vasquez is present. All right, um, tell me how Ms. Vasquez is doing in services this month. She's still making really great progress. Um, from our last session, she's I believe she's only attended one counseling session, but they agreed to put that on pause um, while she continued to look for a more stable um, employment uh, position. Uh, for parenting, she's still um, participating in that service with Alondra Mora with the TFF program. Um, her drug testing is still negative. Um, she did complete her Padres program, um, but she has uh, left that line open for Ms. Vasquez so she can continue to get additional support with them. So she does attend when she can um, for that as well. Um, women's group, she's also completed the required amount of um, group that she needed, but she continues to go weekly for that support. Um, and she's doing really great with Alondra. Um, from that transition from Jaylee. So I'm really proud of this family. She's making a lot of changes and we're seeing some positives, um, not only with her, but with those kiddos. All right, um, from the Family Center Treatment folks, do we have anything to add on behalf of uh, the family for Ms. Vasquez? Yes, ma'am. Yes, I would ma say that the family has shown a lot of consistency in implementing in the new skills that they've been learning with us. Um, overall, I would say that the family has uh, demonstrated a lot of uh, transitional indicators that I feel confident um, transferring them um, into the new, the next phase, phase three, which is valuing change. Um, Christina, I would say she shows a lot of initiative in wanting better for the family, for the kids. Um, and I have nothing but high expectations of them. Okay, Ms. Vasquez, all of that sounds very positive. Can you unmute yourself? There you go. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, I have done a lot of strives with Alondra. We have, uh, I appreciate her a whole lot because she lets me talk about anything that we have going on in our family. She's very open to hearing any issues that we have. They are willing to help as long as, uh, as well as Samantha. She um, helps me with everything that we need. Anytime we ask um, for anything that the boys need, she's on top of it. I appreciate you guys actually CPS and St. Francis being in our lives because it's just helped us be on a better track for my children. And just the kids with their trauma, they, you know, they're not worried about having to go visit with their dad. They're not worried about having, you know, especially Legend, because he was having a bunch of issues of having to go, you know, when it was his dad's time. Like he was having a lot of issues and he was showing disciplinary issues in school. And now that his dad hasn't been around, and we've been keeping those boundaries. He's been having better strides in school. He's been doing a whole lot better. And also they are putting him on a new medication. He does have to be on a Ritalin medication uh, for his ADHD. But with that, it's just kind of trial and error. So we are still um, got good hopes for him because he will be a first grader next year. Um, AJ is thriving. Um, hopefully we'll have him in daycare pretty soon. Potty training is kind of hard with him, but boys just take a little bit longer to learn. Uh, they're a little more hesitant to use the bathroom. 
But um, with everybody's support, um, I think we're doing really good and we're just on track with um, everything. And then our my services with the drug classes, just so that way I don't have to go to NAs and just be like anonymous there. Like it's just super big and it's just like, I feel like they don't help me. And with those individual classes, there's like five people that go to group. So we get to talk you know, we have more time to talk, more time to express what we need individually. And then just doing the um, surveys afterwards also help. And then they provide services like if we need um, extra planning for like a sponsor or if we need any um, help with a recovery plan, um, which I already have one in place. And I have my emergency numbers of people that I will call when and if I have any triggers and then my grounding so I think we're doing really good. Um, I just got to keep on this pace and keep with our routine for the kids. And I think it's just healthy for all of us all the way around. Awesome. Oh, that sounds very, very good. Miss Mason, any concerns with the kids or this family at all? No, Your Honor, none. Okay, Miss Vasquez, I am very proud of you. Um, your family has been in my court for some time and it sounds like this is working. So I'm very, very pleased. So I will set another review hearing for you January the 9th at 3. We have the parties identified. Gary Mitchell right, with the Lubbock County District Attorney's Office appearing on behalf of the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. The department appears today by and through Chrissy Meeker, caseworker and supervisor Melissa Speed, present and ready to proceed. All right, Johnston, attorney for the parents. We're present ready, Your Honor. Who did you say the worker was? I thought it was going to be Chrissy Meeker, Your Honor. Don't see her. Okay, let's come back to this one. Gary Mitchell with the Lubbock County District Attorney's Office appearing on behalf of the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. The department appears today by Megan Mealan, caseworker, and Alejandra Mosquito as supervisor. And hopefully they're present and ready to proceed or someone in their place. Jana Clift Williams, I'm the attorney for the respondent mother, Mercedes uh, Ramirez, and she should be here, Your Honor. I spoke with her just about 15 minutes ago. I will text her. Jared Miller, attorney at Lydum. All right, do we have our workers here from the department? Nope. I don't see any emails or text from anyone alerting me of any problems over there. What about the Taylor parents? Do we have a worker on the Taylor parents? And again, that, that's also uh, Megan Millen and Miss Mosqueda on that, on the Taylor. Okay, I'm going to stop and wait on your workers. Let me make some calls. Let me make some calls. I'll be right back. Hi, you can just jump on the roll for Jonas Goodell with CPS. I'm out on it from the line. Please call the office at 806-472-5060. Thank you. At the tone, please record your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press 1 for more options. Ms. Slay, can you tell me what case you are here for? We're here on the Bedari case, Your Honor. All right, let's take up the Bedari case. Well, I, I, I sent my client the link. I don't know if she's in the waiting room or not. I don't have anybody in the waiting room. Okay. And uh, I, I'll go forward without my client, Judge. All right, we need my prosecutor back. Uh, Mr. Mitchell, are you there? Yes, ma'am. And Judge, just... Oh. Yes, ma'am. Judge, my client had informed me that the CPS caseworker had sent her the link to the December 5th afternoon docket. So I'm wondering if, may, and she was in a waiting room on that one. So I'm wondering if maybe there's a few caseworkers over there. I don't, I don't even have that waiting room open anymore or that. No, link. but if you, yeah, if you log into the wrong one, it'll put you in this virtual hell that you can't get out of. So I, I don't have a way to access them is what I'm telling you. Okay. So I don't know. I, they just need to Hello. Know. Come to the right one. Okay, Vidari. Yes, we also. December. 
Your Honor, if I can have just 10 seconds, they've got the wrong updated link and I will send a new one to them and that's where they all have that link. If you will excuse me just one second. Identify? Yes, Your Honor, Gary Mitchell with the Lubbock County District Attorney's Office appearing on behalf of the Texas Department of uh, Family and Protective Services. The department appears by and through St. Francis Ministries caseworker Garrett Kilo and Supervisor Karanda Slay present ready to proceed. Harding Watson on behalf of responding mother, Neil Vaduri. President Ready to it. Uh I had contact with my client as, as recent as today. Uh she has the Zoom link. Uh she was supposed to be here. Uh, but I'm here on the behalf. Linda Edling for Sergio Vidari. Rachel Weldy, attorney at Lydon for the children, present ready. Casa, and it looks like Mandy Moorhead from Casa has just been able to join as well. Okay, tell me about the children. It looks like they are in their same placements. How are they doing? Really well, Your Honor. Um, both girls, um, I've already seen them this month, yeah. are doing spectacular. Um, they um, are going through um, kind of normal um, five and three year old. Um, behaviors, but overall are healthy and happy. Um, they're, um, Michaela, the older girl, is doing well in school, um, and she's learning and um, learning how to do homework and, and all that sort of stuff, and Kai is doing really well in her daycare, um, and uh, Sergio Jr. or Malachi, he, uh, he prefers to go by Malachi, but uh, he is doing really well as well. Um, He's still attending all of his services and all of his needs are met. And um, all the kids are happy and healthy other than <clears throat> some seasonal, um, you know, allergies and colds, but nothing out of the ordinary. Okay. Any medications that any of them are on? Yes, Your Honor. So um, the girls um, both take a sort of... Uh, over-the-counter um, allergy medication to help keep them regulated. They just actually ended up switching that up. So it's probably different than what's on the report there um, on different um, medication, but it's, it's all just over-the-counter allergy medication. And then um, Sergio or Malachi, he's still on the Quillivant and he started back on intuitive since the last time we've been in court. And that's kind of helped calm him down. Um, he was kind of outgrowing, just the quill event. And so having the intuitive as well has been helpful to keep him, um, you know, calm and focused. Okay. Malachi's got some, is on the autism spectrum. Yes, your honor. Okay. And we get uh, plenty of 504 ser four services for him in school to help him with his needs. Yes, your honor. He actually, his schedule is quite unique. He, um, he does really well in ABA therapy. So he is attending ABA therapy halftime at school halftime. Um, so for two days a week, he um, goes to um, that ABA therapy. And then two days a week, he goes to um, school and he's in a special program at Honey Elementary. And um, on the last day, um, he um, goes to um, a therapy in the morning and then I believe it's school in the afternoon. Okay. Tell me a little bit about the ABA therapy. What does that entail? So it's it's more of a uh, kind of a one-on-one um or not necessarily one-on-one, -on -one, but it's more, it's more focused and, and uh, intensive than like normal school. Um, he has a uh, communication device that he learns how to use where he has a program on the, on the little iPad where he can learn to communicate and talk. And he does well uh, working through curriculum there and um, stuff like that. So they, they work on a more comprehensive um, sort of uh education than, than just school so behavior as well they they learn help him teach him to you know control his behavior and stuff like that okay very good Did either one of the other two show any signs of anything like this um not at the moment um we have had recent psychologicals in cans and um one of the girls it was um Michaela just recently, I think had her psychological and I think they were, um, there were signs that um, were starting to show that our 
um, representative of both autism and trauma. And so right now that's being monitored, whether that is, um, whether these symptoms are um, signs of autism or, or past trauma. Um, but both of the girls are attending equine therapy right now uh, once a week with the Texas Girls and Boys Ranch and Shalana Jacoby. So they go on Friday and that teaches them, you know, body regulation, emotional regulation, stuff like that. And they're, they're doing really well in that. Okay, very good. And these are not permanent placements? The girls are in um, a home that is uh, adoption motivated. And then um, Malachi, um, he is in a placement that um, is not going to kick him out, but is not intended to be permanent. And so we are working on finding a new legal risk placement for Malachi um, that um, would be willing to adopt. Got it. Okay, Ms. Weldy, any additional concerns regarding the children? Your Honor, I don't have any additional concerns outside of what um, Mr. Killo has said, but I did want to draw your attention that both placements are on, and they might be able to shed more information for you. Okay, we'll get to them in just a second. Um, Casa, additional concerns regarding the children? Ma'am, I think uh, Garrett spoke well. I think the children are doing their placements. Um, I think really the motivation right now is to find a new legal risk placement for Malachi. Girls are doing great where they're at. Um, bad. Okay. Um, my placements, uh, if you folks want to unmute and add anything that you think is important with respect to how the children are doing or what they need. I can speak to the girls. Um, the medication they're on is Zyrtec and Flonase. Um, we did, for the last couple of days, we've been doing Benadryl just to help dry them up at the doctor's suggestion. Um, they are doing amazing. Um, they're both in gymnastics. They actually have an award ceremony next Saturday for all the things that they've learned in gymnastics. Um, Michaela, we started out not even being able to do a cartwheel and now we're flipping over bars and um, doing balance beam and everything. And it's really, really helped her confidence in herself. And um, one of the things the teacher focuses on is not I can't, but I can try. And that's become a theme kind of even beyond gymnastics. And she's really been able to kind of step out her perfectionism that she had um, to be willing to make mistakes and then just move on and not like focus on them. Um, she's learning um, adding and subtracting and likes math. Um, reading we struggle a little more on, but she's on target. She knows her letters, knows her sounds. Um, she's where she's supposed to be in reading and she's progressing where she's supposed to be in reading. Um, Kaya is learning her letters and is air writing letters constantly. Um, and her um, vocabulary just in the last couple of months, like she's using words that um, and using them correctly that every once in a while she'll say a word and we're like, wow, and it's used correctly. So her vocabulary is really growing. Everybody at school loves her. Um, she's, she's counting. Um, we can make it up to 14. We typically skip 15 and on to 16, but um, they're both doing amazing, um, doing great, uh, ready for Christmas. Um, have both seen Santa and um, all the things. So they're doing great. Awesome. Miss Evelyn, Mr. Watson, anything on behalf of your clients regarding the children? I'm not aware of anything from my clients, Your Honor. Uh, Judge, when I spoke with uh, my client, she didn't raise any concerns with the kids. And can I talk about Malachi? Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, Malachi, is, like they said, he's doing great. Um, he did start that new Intuitive medication um, back in October that he had just grown and been on the same dose for a long time. And so um, impulse control is a little hard, but um, this new medication in combination with the Quilivant is going great. Um, he has a lot more impulse control and is able to focus and get a lot more done um, at school. And um, his ABA therapy is amazing. He goes like they said, um, half the time it's 20 hours a week and then he goes to school the rest of the time and they work really well with school. They work together. So ABA kind of asks the school and me, what problems are we seeing? How can we help? How can we help him um, be the best he can be at school and at home? And so they address those target issues and it is pretty one-on-one. -on -one, so he's able to um, just get a lot of um, individualized help and so it's been really great he loves he loves going to both aba and school and um he is learning to 
spell like he's spelling words crazy words that i didn't even know he knew on his device so he is reading he has a lot more having his device has been amazing he's able to share with us what's locked up in there in that brain that he hasn't been able to share in years so it's been amazing and i also wanted to add that the girls he gets to see his sisters um several times a month they come to our house and he goes to their house and um um, so there is visitation between him and the girls so awesome this is what i like to hear Okay, very good. Tell me about parents' progress. Your Honor, um, I, um, as far as mom, so I, I don't, um, since the last court hearing we had, um, we kind of reset the deck on everything. And since then, um, I have received uh, no proof of services from the father. I haven't been able to make contact with the father. Um, I got one pay stub from him, but I think that was before the last final. Um, and um, other than that, I haven't been able to meet with him. I haven't been able uh, to get him to go drug test for me, to contact any of the service providers, anything like that. The mother, um, I have been able to see, I have not received any proof of completion of services from the mother other than um, just the other day, uh, about six days ago, uh, Richard Gatlin sent me an email that she went and saw him on um, November the 6th. Um, she went to, she attended one session with him. And then on November the 20th, um, her session was canceled by the counselor because she did not confirm prior to the session. So that um, other than that one um, counseling session, uh, she is not, um, I've received no completion of or no proof of completion of services um, from Ms. Fidari have had I didn't see her last month I saw her the month before um, I did get a drug test from her that was on um, let me see uh, I got a drug test for from her in October um, that was uh, positive and it was a dilute uh, sample uh, other than that no other um, no other progress to report on my end. Okay, Ms. Evelyn, anything to add on behalf of your client? No, I would just say that the last conversation I had with him, he was he's very intent on keeping his job, complying with parole. Uh, I don't have anything other than, than that. Uh, I didn't intend to ask, since there appears to be someone in the courtroom, I assume it's neither parent on this case, but I just wanted to be sure about that. Because I did give him the link and tell him the courtroom was an option. I don't see anybody in the courtroom. There's a mute and a no camera on the screen, but it just shows the courtroom. So I didn't know if there was anyone there or not. Yeah, I don't know. Mr. Watson, anything to add on behalf of your client? Uh, Judge, uh, my client, she reported to me that she's doing AANA classes uh, online. Uh, additionally, she reported to me that she did the substance abuse evaluation and she received a recommendation about inpatient treatment. Uh, additionally, she told me about meeting with Mr. Gatlin and she said that uh, he's willing to work with her uh, if she goes to inpatient treatment. She said on the 18th, so it will be Monday, uh, she's supposed to be going to inpatient. Uh, also, she maintains a job. Uh, I think she does make ready homes where she goes in and cleans homes. Uh, and she has housing. She stays currently stays with her mother. Uh, that's all the information I have, Judge. Okay, I'm going to set for our final hearing to resume in this case, February the 29th. I'm hoping, I said it that far out, I'm hoping that we are able to find a legal risk placement for Malachi between now and then, um, and then a settlement conference I think would be helpful. So February 29th, 2024 is a leap year. February 29th at 9 a.m. Okay, yes. anything yes. else on Radari? No, you're right. All right, we'll be yes, Your Honor. Gary Mitchell with the Lubbock County District Attorney's Office, appearing on behalf of the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. The department appears today with caseworker Megan Millen, 
and Supervisor Alejandro Mosquito. And Your Honor, I do need to apologize to the court and to those who are in the room now. I made the mistake in sending the link earlier. That's why I was late, is that I had the wrong date. So I apologize to the court and to the participants. That's okay. We're all here now. Okay, um, go ahead, Ms. Cliff Williams. Janet Cliff Williams, I'm the attorney for the respondent mother, Mercedes Ramirez, and I believe she's present. Yes, Your Honor. She, this, is Selena, this is Selena Castillo with St. Francis. I'm present with um, Ramirez family right now. Okay, Jared, I think you got cut off. Yeah, Jared, my attorney, I'd like Thanks. Okay, tell me how the Ramirez family is doing and how Mercedes is doing in, in services this month. Um, she's doing great. Um, she started outpatient rehab this month on her own decision. Um, she wanted a little bit more support on her sobriety. Um, she's maintained negative drug tests. She's doing all the TFF sessions. Um, I know the worker changed this month, um, but she's still working with them. Um, and Jace, the oldest kiddo, he finished with Richard Gatlin this month um, with his sessions. Uh, my only thing, Mercedes was mentioning that they upped her TFF sessions from four hours a week to five hours a week. Um, and I wasn't notified about that. And she wasn't either until they told her at a visit. So we were just kind of wondering why there was a change. Okay. The family center treatment folks, tell me what happened there. Why well, we need an extra hour. Hi, Your Honor. So I was advised by my supervisor to go ahead and begin doing two hours and 30 minutes each session. Um, that was what was advised to me by my supervisor. I believe she's on here as well. Um, I was told that it would benefit the family more if we spent more time with them. Um, I did go ahead and let Mercedes know the day I was informed. Um, I do apologize. I hadn't reached out to the department to the department about this. Um, so that okay. was how's Mr. Ramirez doing with the family center treatment? She's doing good. Um, she did have Kimberly Rodriguez before. Um, however, Kimberly is no longer with us. Um, I am her new caseworker. Um, I Mercedes has some concerns in regards to our organization. Um, she has another caseworker joining um because of because of some issues. Um, I will also be uh, leaving next week. Um, so one of her issues was definitely having different caseworkers in her home and she wanted to discuss some of that um, with services she's been doing great um, we've worked on coping mechanisms with anxiety we've worked on love languages and we've worked with the kids on turkey hands and um, we've done drawings with the kids um, but those are some of the concerns that she did want to voice um, to you that she has voiced to me okay go ahead mr ramirez um Okay, so um, like we had discussed or how uh, Selena had had mentioned, um, we will actually be receiving a third case work, caseworker um, for this part of the program. Um, at first, I felt like we were benefiting. We had plenty of momentum. Um, now, I don't really feel like we have a connection with this program. Um, it is very hard to make those connections to begin with, and even more so for the children to have to make those connections. Um, and I did voice all of this with, uh, with my lawyer as well. Um, it's very hard to, to have to keep making those connections. Um, I don't feel like we're benefiting from this part of the program whatsoever now. Um, and again, it's, it has nothing to do with, with our caseworkers. They're obviously doing their job. They're supposed to, what they're supposed to be doing. Um, I just don't feel like we're really benefiting from this point because the kids aren't, aren't very participate or they're not participating very well anymore. Um, not only that, um, we, we weren't aware of having to add this extra hour. Um, we've complied with all sessions. We have not missed a session. We are doing everything that we need to down to, to the T and I'm not really sure why we're needing to tack on another hour. Um, I completely understand that I'm in this situation because of my own poor decisions, but, um, I, I'm not understanding why we we need to be worked with even more. Um, not only that, I don't appreciate having a supervisor reach out to me to make sure that her worker is doing what she's supposed to, asking what we're doing in our sessions, asking um, if we've discussed our scheduling and um, confirming that I did know our schedule. And then my FIS worker um, came to me and asked what I was confused about. And I told her I was not confused about anything. And she said, when my supervisor had reached out to you, um, she said that she just, that I needed to clarify some things. So that was the only, the only um, 
I guess, miscommunication that there was between me and the supervisor. But I, again, I don't understand why a supervisor had reached out to me. Um, mm-hmm. That kind of raised red flags on my end, making me think that we were doing something wrong. Um, it All in all, I just don't feel like we are benefiting from this program at this point, um, especially having to to connect with the third FIS worker um, in the next two weeks. Okay, Ms. Ramirez, tell me what you're learning in the department services. Um, we have worked on um, different activities that help identify triggers mm-hmm. that um, lay out plans in case uh, there is a triggering event and how we can deal with that, um, who needs to, or who we need to reach out to to prevent any uh, safety concerns or um, any any relapses, anything like that, um, who we can contact in, in times of, um, of any uh, traumatic event or triggering event. Um, we are um, identifying what we need to work on as a family and as individuals to create um, just an overall stronger family unit. Um, just uh, plenty, plenty of activities along those lines that are just helping identify um, certain certain triggering things and just building overall emotional intelligence. Okay, who's the supervisor for the FIS unit? Um, her, name is, her name is Jaylee Reynolds, Your Honor. Ms. Reynolds, are you there? Yes, ma'am, I'm here. Okay, tell me why we need, first of all, why do we need another hour in the home? Um, So what we have been noticing is that our FISs are either not documenting their hours um, correctly or um, that families like sessions are ending early. So we have just advised for all of our FISs to spend a little bit of extra time with their family making that connection. Um, And so that way we can make up those hours to make sure that we're ensuring that we are in the home for two hours um, twice a week, just because that hasn't been met um, with several FISs and several families. So we just want to make sure that we're doing our due diligence to keep our fidelity on our end. And Your Honor, on behalf of my client, um, five hours a week is a lot. I, I yeah, have a single parent. That, that, does, that makes no sense to me. The, the FIS unit, you folks aren't doing what you're supposed to be doing, so we're going to punish the parents with another hour in their home. No. We're going to go back to four hours a week and we're actually going to do the four hours a week, but it's only going to be four hours a week. That's what, that's what the parents agreed to. Um, so um, adding on another hour uh, it would not be fair to them. So we're going to do four hours a week, like the department agreed and like the parents agreed. And it's actually going to be four hours a week. And your honor, um, she did. And she did let me know Mercedes. Her main concern was just having a new caseworker each week. Um, that's not in my control. And I apologize for that. Um, we're having a workers resign. Um, and that's something that's out of my control. Um, that's something that I would discuss. I would want to discuss with my supervisor in this case. Um, but that was her main concern. I understand. I'm, I was getting to that one. <laughs> so I'm going to try, try it with the third worker. And certainly if we have another caseworker change in the next case, we're going to drop this part of the program for this family and just go with a motion to participate with the department services. Okay. It sounds like mom's fully complying though. I didn't hear anything from either team regarding mom's compliance and issues with mom's compliance. Is that right? Yes. Yes, ma'am. All right. Mr. Miller, any concerns with the children? No judge. Okay. I'm going to set another review hearing January the 9th at four. Let me have the parties identified. Thank you, Your Honor. Gary Mitchell with the Lubbock County District Attorney's Office, appearing on behalf of the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. The department appears today by and through Chrissy Meeker and Melissa Speed. Judge, can you run me next? I'm in another hearing that'll be over in about five minutes. Okay, Mr. Florenson, if you'll have a seat for me for a moment. Oh, sorry, Judge. That's okay. <laughs> I thought I was needed. It's okay. Go ahead, Mr. Mitchell. I thought I was done, but I could repeat that. I think it's Chrissy Meeker and Melissa Speed appearing on behalf of the department today. And I think they're present here in the courtroom now. Okay. And Mr. Johnson is present in two hearings right now, it sounds like. And then Ms. Cliff Williams. Jana Cliff Williams. I'm the attorney at Lightham for Jane, the child. All right. Um, Ms. Meeker, uh, tell me how the parents are doing in services from the department's standpoint. Lexis and Dominic are doing fantastic. We've had another great month. Um, They're continuing to do their TFF sessions as scheduled. Um, They're both attending counseling individually. Um, They're doing their parenting classes. Jane is happy and healthy. She's attending daycare. All of her medical appointments are going great. 
Um, Dominic has continued to provide all negative drug tests. Um, we have absolutely no concerns with these parents at this time. All right, very good. And what about the FIS unit? How are the parents doing with the family center treatment? Hi, yes, um, they are doing really well. We are currently in restructuring. I've been the only one on this case the entire time. Um, and they have always um, shown up on time. They've always uh, communicated well. Uh, and they've always had a willingness to learn and grow. And I've seen lots of positive changes in, uh, with their communication patterns and their communication skills and how they respond and react to one another. All right, Mr. and Mrs. Reynolds, y'all tell me what you're learning in these services. Can you unmute yourself? Uh, I'm learning a lot. I'm learning how to just be a better father, basically, and uh, how to control myself and um, just basically be a better parent. Can you give me an uh, example? Uh, I guess I could say like how to care for Jane more, you know, how to understand her crying language and how to properly care for her. Okay, Ms. Reynolds. Um, I would say the best thing that I've learned so far, especially through TFF is uh, breaking generational trauma and how it can how that healing can affect, uh, put me and my daughter on a more positive parenting path. Very good. All right, Ms. Cliff Williams, um, anything on behalf of Jane? I uh, know your honor, Jane is healthy, uh, happy, and all of her needs are being met. I have no concerns whatsoever. The parents are doing a great job. I'm very proud of them. Mr. Johnson, anything to add on behalf of your people who are doing what they need to do, it sounds like? Yes, just, just wondering what what more they need to do. I think they've alleviated the concerns. They've been in the program for three or four months now. There's never been a, a single issue with them. So I'm just, um, the, this program is a little bit new to me. So I'm just wondering what else they need to do or when they can be released from it. All right, Mr. Villanueva, tell us what phase we're in. Uh, we are currently in phase two, moving easily into phase three, uh, which is kind of getting towards the, the end of, of the treatment. It is a six month uh, process, um, but uh, that's where we're at is, is just moving forward along um, almost in phase three. Okay, I don't want to cut it short. I've had a couple of removals um, after some very, very good TFF cases recently. So I want to make sure that we give the program the full six months that it sounds like we need. So I am going to set another review hearing January the 9th at three. All right. Thank you, Judge. Parties identify. All right. Thank you. Thank you all. We'll be uh, yes, Your Honor. Gary Mitchell with the Lubbock County District Attorney's Office, appearing on behalf of the Texas Department of uh, Family and Protective Services appearing in Megan Millen and Mosquito, or excuse me, and Melissa Speed for the department. That's the one you, I think you just called, Your Honor. I, I'm, I'm Taylor. And I think Ms. Turks over here is for Alicia yes. Walker for the parents. Yes, ma'am. Good good afternoon, Judge. Uh, Cynthia Turso appearing for Mr. and Mrs. Taylor, who are here via Zoom, um, present and ready to proceed. Jared Miller, attorney ad litem. Okay. Uh, tell me how the Taylors are doing in services this month. Things are going great. Um, Joshua finished up with Richard Gatlin successfully. Um, Kaylee has her last one on Friday. Um, they've been negative on drug tests. They finished their homemaking services with our HST Janice Taylor. Um, so I'm about ready to wrap up with this case. I think they've done really well um, pending a drug test this week and Kaylee finishing her sessions on Friday. But after that, they've done everything else I've asked them to do. Okay, and the most important thing, are we addressing the concerns uh, that led to this case being opened? Are, are the parents doing well as far as implementing what they are learning? Yes, um, I know they've been working really well with our HST on the homemaker services. I've seen a great improvement in the home um, and they've maintained negative drug tests. Kaylee's voice to me, um, like how she handles her triggers and what she does instead of using if she's ever stressed or anxious. Um, I know Joshua said he's been sober for about two years though. So they're good about talking to me about those things. All right, Mr. Mr. Taylor, do y'all have anything to add? Ms. Taylor, you're on mute. No, ma'am. 
Okay, Mr. Taylor, I'm not sure he's there. Ms. Terso, anything on behalf of your clients? Uh, no, Judge, uh, just very proud of the parents for continuing to show up, use the services that have made avail been made available to them and really working on improving and growing themselves as individuals and as parents. All right, very good. Mr. Miller, any concerns with the children? No, Judge. Okay, I wanna set it for another review here in January the 9th at three, if we need one. Um, but certainly it sounds like the department may be dismissing before then, and that would be fine. But if we need another hearing, it'll be January the 9th at three, have the parties identified. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, my client should be here. I'm not seeing her in the courtroom. I talked with her just a little earlier. Oh, have anybody in the waiting room. Okay. Okay. Oh, she's asking me to send the link, which I did. I have Angel Phipps in the room. Is that, is that her? No, Your Honor. She's asking me to send the link. Um, let me see if I can find it on my email real quick. Angel's the paternal aunt, Your Honor, I believe. Placement. She is placement. But Ariana is the mom. Um, okay. We can take a break on this one, and let's do the next okay. one. Identify. Gary Mitchell with the Lubbock County District Attorney's Office appearing on behalf of the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services, the department appearing today through caseworker Chrissy Meeker and Supervisor Melissa Speed, present and ready to proceed. Terry Morgison, attorney for the mom. Jared Miller, attorney at Lightham. Judge, did you call our case? I just got on. I'm not sure which one you're here for, Matt. Which one are you here for? I yeah, Matt, here. this is it. Ephraim Ramirez, I'm here on a new case. Okay, this is a TFF case, and I think it was just Miss Sapuentes. So uh, we had this case set uh, for a TFF hearing or a compliance review hearing, and I left it on the docket for today, even though this um, turned into a removal and we have an adversary hearing set. Um, Ms. Morgison, you tell me, do we think we need to have a compliance review hearing or we just need to lump all this into the adversary hearing next week and actually have the testimony heard? Under I believe that that's the most appropriate means, Your Honor. Um, I appeared because it was still on the docket, but to me, when the department filed their new petition, that that alleviated the necessity for today's hearing. Okay. Mr. Mitchell, is the department dismissing this case uh, as far as the TFF motion to participate case? Your Honor, I I just picked this up, and if you could give me until later this afternoon, but I agree with Ms. Morgison that we don't need to have this hearing today, and if that requires a dismissal, then then uh, I, I would urge that, and we'll take this up with the adversary hearing next week. Okay, send me a dismissal on this. We have these children, let me make sure, yes, we have these children in care. I signed a removal order yesterday on them, so send me a dismissal on this case. Yes, ma'am. And that's my understanding that they are in care elsewhere. And okay. I just wanted to ask your honor, because I never know how it works now. Who who do I contact about visitation? Do I contact St. Francis or CPS given the circumstances? I believe it's St. Francis, Terry. <laughs> I, that's what I would urge, Terry, uh, especially after the docket today where there's some overlap. And okay. I believe this would be in the hands of CPS now. D does anybody know who my contact, Miss B? Do you know who I call? We, uh, I will send you an email here shortly with all the contact information, if you don't mind. Okay, that works. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Copy me okay. on that email as well. All right. So everybody here on the Ramirez case, y'all are free to go, and I will sign that dismissal today, and we'll have our adversary hearing next week. Unless, unless anybody wants to visit with any of the workers or in a breakout room or anything like that, that's another reason I left the hearing on the docket today in case. Anybody wanted to visit? I'm good. Okay. All right. Y'all are free to go on Ramirez then. Thank you. Your Honor, I, Your did, Honor, just I, did, just... That... I did just send her that link. Um, I believe she should be getting on just any minute. She did oh. ask me for the link. I sent it to her on my text message, but I believe she wanted the actual link where she could connect to it. Okay. We'll wait a minute. We have the parties identify. Gary Mitchell with the Lubbock County District Attorney's Office appearing on behalf of the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. The department appears today by and through Daisy Campos, present and ready to proceed. Jenna Clift Williams, I'm the attorney for the respondent mother, Ariana Reyna, and she's present. We're ready, Your Honor. 
Katie Mason, attorney and guardian line for the child present ready. Okay, tell me about Ms. Reyna's progress. Um, it's very well. Uh, she's actually successfully completed parenting. Um, she she is still in counseling um, because she wants to be. She she really likes our counselor here, and um, he's he says she's making great progress. They're talking about uh, her past, what's going on, and he's very he's he's willing to definitely have more sessions with her as many as she would like. Um, or I guess the only concern we're having is the housing issue. I think. She's already had, she already has the voucher for our, her HUD housing, but I don't think that she is in, in, in an apartment yet. I think it's, she's put in applications and she's just waiting to hear back. Um, but that's, that's our only concern. And she was negative on her drug test November 14th. Um, but it's just the housing situation is the only thing that is pending at this time. Ms. Cliff Williams. I'm very proud of my client, Your Honor. Um, she is engaging in counseling, uh, as the caseworker stated, of her own free will. Uh, the only thing that is holding her up is that housing. Uh, I hate for her to lose the benefit of the counseling, uh, but I would leave that up to her as to whether or not she wants this case dismissed. Um, as we uh, discussed in an earlier hearing, um, Ariana aged out of care herself, and so uh, she is doing very, very well. Um, given her circumstances. I agree. Uh, Ms. Mason, any concerns with Oliver? I don't have any concerns, Your Honor. All right. Ms. Raina, can you unmute yourself? Hi. Hi. You're kind of freezing up. Can you hear me? Mr. Mitchell, tell me, do we need to keep going with hearings in this case? Uh, does the department want to wait until mom has housing? What do we want to do? You know, if we might, uh, I might direct that attention to to the department representative there. Uh, I noted in my in my notes that she's completed the parenting testing negative. Is there any of the uh, of the services that she has not completed that we need more time to complete? Dave. I'm sorry. Um, I'm. I mean, if she's willing to keep um, the baby with Miss Phipps, I mean, I don't. I mean, obviously, she doesn't have anywhere to live. But I mean, the department doesn't have. I mean, we're ready to dismiss. Also, she's doing like I said, she's done very well. But um, I guess just it's just the housing situation, and if she's willing to keep um, Oliver with uh, with Miss Angel Phipps. Your Honor, if I may. I don't, I don't know who's talking. This is Minerva. Uh, I'm okay. Daisy's supervisor, Your Honor. And okay. as Daisy was saying, our only concern is just her housing situation. Um, we know the child is safe right now. Um, she hasn't um, made any attempts or threats or anything like that to remove the child from a safe home. Um, I'm thinking, and this is just my opinion, Your Honor, that she, if she leaves the child uh, with his aunt until she can um, secure housing for herself, then I really don't see the need to continue with hearing. She's done very, very well. Okay, sounds good. I'll dismiss. Good job, Miss Reina. Very Thank proud you. of you. Thank All you. right, very good. Anything else? No, Your Honor. Okay, send me a dismissal on this one as well. Yes, ma'am. Thank, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor.